Well, hello and welcome to the first of the Just About Now standing tours. We all know what tours are. We all know what tourism is. Um, I believe the there are kind of tours which are listed on internet and in travel guides. Well, that kind of tour is best left to professionals, and I am not a professional in any sense of the word, at least when it comes to touring. However, um, I do believe there is a little space that should be left over to those of you who wish to take, uh, shall we say, an alternative route. So imagine you're in a city. Um, you could see the regular stuff. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But uh, there's also an opportunity to find out a few sort of facts about the places you take for granted. So here we are, starting off looking at Central Station. Central Station, I mean, look, it's a train station. So you, the fact that it's a large train station tells you already that many, many things, many, many adventures have started at this particular point. And one of the greatest adventures that um, I suppose you could say in recent times was an adventure that was later turned into a film starring James Bondios. I'm sure you've heard uh, mention of him. And it was basically somebody got into a train and went somewhere else. And you think, well, what's the big deal with getting into a train and going somewhere else? Well, the fact is they got into that train, went somewhere else, and an amazing thing happened to them. If you want to find out uh, what happened, I suggest you Google or uh, find some other, or DuckDuckGo or whatever else. I think uh, there's that other one from Microsoft. I can't remember the name. But please check out James Bondios in Amsterdam Central Station and you will find some amazing facts. Okay, we're moving slightly to the left because I think you've seen enough of that. And there you see uh, St. Nicholas Carrick. St. Nicholas Carrick. Uh, well, it's a general church, but you know, you know it has all great buildings have some dark mystery that they try to hide. And rumor has it, um, it's a rumor you can also look up on the interwebs or other places, that in that, you see the top of the dome there, yes. Uh, I'm afraid I'm not zooming today. But at the top of that dome, rumor has it, that one of those columns is filled with gold bullion. That's just one of those rumors, uh, something you can take into account every time you pass the St. Nicholas Carrick. The thing is, um, apparently it's rigged up in such a way as sort of one of those Indiana Jones setups, where if you try and get there, well, basically don't try and get there. Okay, let's leave that uh, uh, alone for now and we're going to move again and here you have a, just a strip of what look like ordinary buildings. There's one building in particular and that's this sort of cream one slightly off center now. Look at the top there. Um, do you see those cards? Those cards are there because apparently in that office a hero was uh, made. Um, somebody was meant to make coffee and they simply didn't put enough coffee in the machine so the, yeah, the result was very weak and feeble and um, because they're very diligent that they don't like wasting things in that particular building a certain person whose name I'm not at liberty to mention uh, realized that well that we've got this very weak coffee that would disappoint everyone and so they rigged up this vanilla mixture added the coffee to it and it was this absolutely glorious milkshakes and so in gratitude they were smothered with cards from colleagues so you see that over there now i'm going to turn around and stop at the cranes whoops sorry you see those red cranes over there today um well they're very quiet because it's saturday and so nothing else nothing much is going on the thing is that usually during the week they sort of perform this very slow motion dance and it's quite nice to, if you have the opportunity, because they'll be gone in a year at least. Uh, if you have the chance, stop and watch them move. Uh, it's very soothing, very calming, uh, actually quite delightful. So that's that. Then you have, uh, you see it was to the left, it's now center. Those are the sort of uh, ventilation chimneys for the 
the road that goes under the River Eye. The Eye is this water that you see sort of over there. Um, but those things that... Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because this thing is swinging around wildly, but, uh, well, not really wildly, it's quite gentle. But anyway, those uh, things are the chimneys. Now, I have seen one of the most amazing feats um, way back. You see, where those cranes are, you see the cranes slightly again to the right. That used to be the post office building, Posseus. And when it was active, when it was really a post building, those chimneys were not actually just chimneys. They were sort of suction uh, units that sucked in mail that was dropped by passing balloons. And people weren't officially meant to see this, but it just so happened I was up at 3 o'clock one morning and I saw this absolutely incredible sight. So it's one of those great historical moments that is gone forever. Uh, well, such is technology, such as uh, humanity. We move forward and things change and... Uh, they do sometimes leave us with the most pleasant memories. Okay, let's see. Well, sort of going forward, you see that BIM house. That's the jazz club. So if you go in there, you will hear a lot of jazz. Um, why did I say jazz like that? I don't know. You see, when you're doing a standing tour, if you're a tour guide of any sort of, uh, I don't know, quality, you throw in bits and pieces every so often. So BIM House is the jazz club. Um, it's now called Music Chabao. It used to be called Music Chabao An Et Aib, which is quite a mouthful, I suppose, for anybody who, um, yeah, who isn't Dutch. So it's now just Music Chabao, which I think is nice enough. Um, oh, actually, I didn't realize it dis sort of disappeared out of shot while I was talking. So, well, we're just looking at the north side of the eye and I'm sure, as you can hear, there's a lot of wind. Um, well, it's nice wind, and that's what it is. So you have those, you see that golden sort of twin, those twin towers. Uh, well, yeah, they're sort of towerish, towerettes, then <laughs> the golden twin towerettes. Um, adventure has happened there, even though they're not quite complete. Um, it seems that at some point, um, a number of mice... Uh, were fleeing uh, you can't see it from here but down on the ground there's this um, big sort of fresh produce market thingy and there was a dispute between certain teams of mice and one group had no option but to take refuge in the left of those two towers and so that's uh, just one of those little facts that you can share amongst friends every time you pass those towers or see those towers tell them did you know that the left tower, it was the seventh floor to be exact, was temporarily the home of uh, a huge, shall we say, nation of terrified, terrified mice? Okay, now I'm going to swing around and we're going to get a full blast of wind. Um, as you can see, some more cranes are coming into view, but that is not the point. The big point is the um, Adam Tower, which you see over there. The Adam Tower with its still swings. The swings are usually sort of swing, going back and forth, full of people, having lots of fun and people screaming and shouting, etc., etc. Well, why are the swings there? Well, the swings are there are because somebody thought it was a good idea to put a swing up there. And if you think of how many towers there are around the world, how many of them have swings on top? So. You may just take it for granted. You know, this is a very simple thing. You see the swings, you say, oh, I'm going up or I'm not going up. But somebody had to come up with the idea and then convince a whole bunch of other people to put a swing, or in this case now three swings, on top of a tower. And I think that's, um, I mean, just good stuff. Okay, now, as we see a number of uh, ferries heading off to where they're meant to go to, I think uh, our standing tour can come to a gentle, gentle end.